Dear brothers and sisters, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is our, with the grace of God, our last episode regarding uh, this heresy of paganism. Why there is icons and the statues in the in Christianity? No, it is not in Christianity, but in the traditional churches. Uh, this episode, especially about now, will bring some proofs from history. Uh, I think this is number six. We covered the Bible. Now we'll get two witnesses, two testimonies from the Bible. One from the fourth century and even one from the 19th century regarding the, the uh, icons and the, uh, the pictures. All right. So actually, there is no more room for anyone to claim anything and say, ah, oh, this is for Old Testament, not the New Testament, all of the stuff. No, as you mentioned, it was until the fourth century after Christ. The first testimony from the fourth century, uh, there is a book named uh, Letters of Saint Jerome. Uh, 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 letter number 51 and we will take uh, item 9 of it what happened at that time is the following uh, there was a, a bishop named saint epiphanius was the bishop of a city named Salamis from cyprus all right sometime in the fourth century he went to jerusalem uh, as there was like sort of a meeting there to attend this meeting when he went there, he was accompanied by the Bishop of Jerusalem named Bishop uh, John. So this is Saint Jerome, letter number 51, item 9, letter of Epiphanius, Bishop of Salamis, Cyprus, to John, Bishop of Jerusalem. So after he went back, he sent him a letter to uh, Saint John, the Bishop of Jerusalem. Uh, because there was a problem, so we need, we, so we read now this part of the letter. Now we know what the problem is. Uh, Saint uh, Epiphanius telling in his letter from Cyprus to Saint John, uh, Bishop of, jo of Jerusalem, the following. Moreover, I have heard that certain persons have the, this grievance against me. What, what was the problem? You will explain when I accompanied you to the holy place called Betil, Betil or Bethel, there to join you in celebrating the collect after uh, like, like, like the, the assembly after the use of the church. I came to a villa called Anablatia or Anablata, and as I was passing. I saw a lamb burning there, asking what place it was and learning it to be a church. I went in to pray and found there a curtain hanging on the doors of the said church, dyed and embroidered. It bore an image either of Christ or one of the saints. I do not rightly remember whose the image was. Seeing this and being loath that an image of a man should be hung up in Christ's church contrary to the teachings of the scriptures, I tore it uh, I tore it and advised the, out, the, the custodians of the place to use it as a winding sheet for some poor person. This, uh, now, this, this is what he said to him. The grievance was, he promised them actually to send them a replacement, a good one, of course there was no uh, photos in it, from Cyprus with a good quality. What happened? He was like he, he, it, it took a bit of uh, too much time. That's why they were not happy that he didn't send it like so quick. But uh, but if you read the rest of the epistle, he said, I was waiting actually to get a very fine, good quality one. 
So they are not happy because this what happened that I tore one and I promised to send a good one, but I wanted to send actually a very, very good one. But now I would like to say, now, here we go. We are in the fourth century. A person just coming from Cyprus to Jerusalem, he saw something wrong. Again, it's the scripture. What was it? It was a photo, could be of Jesus or a saint. And they consider it a photo of a man should not be hanging there on a church of Christ. So what did he do? Although he's just a guest, a visitor, he tore it. Anyone can do this today. Would be very hard, by the way, because you say, mm, not my place, someone needs to manage, or I'm a visitor, I'm a guest, it would be very rude. Can you imagine someone comes to your place and see the photo of uh, St. Mary and just uh, like smashed it or cut, cut it? What do you reckon? But this man said, when I saw it, like, he got like, like the, 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 I would say the jealousy of, the good jealousy inside his heart. Now, shouldn't be a church of God and you do this. No. So he tore it. So this is a witness. This is a story from a person they consider him as a, as a saint. So this is what happened. So they say, we don't interpret the Bible on our own like the Protestant, but we do it like on uh, uh, what, the, uh, what the, the, the fathers. Huh? So why don't you follow this one? Ah, because of money. Because of money, as we'll see. All right? So this is a witness from the 4th century. This, as I've mentioned, so it's not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. Even if it is a picture of Jesus, absolutely. So this is what the guy did. He was very jealous of this, like angry, but like holy one, and they just cut it off. Can you imagine you passing by something and they do it like that? Wow. Huh? Here we go. Okay. Uh, now we bring another testimony uh, from the 19th century. One of the popes of the Coptic Orthodox Church, Pope number 110, uh, called uh, Pope uh, Carolus IV, uh, was a pope since uh, uh, 1853 up to 1861 so second half of the 19th century so actually he was against it but he couldn't do anything until he became uh, the Pope uh, we read this history in uh, uh, volume 4 of uh, the book uh, by uh, the English historian Mrs. Ellen Butcher uh, her book the history of the Coptic nation and its church, page 381 and 382. I'm talking about the Arabic ones. You can download those ones in uh, uh, from the net for free. All right. So what does it say for, about this guy? He was very knowledgeable of his religion. When he enthroned the papal throne and saw that his congregation falling in the sin of idols, worship by kneeling, or prostrating or bowing down to the icons or pictures which they considered as holy these icons were displayed around the walls of the cathedral so he considered this as wrong so when he built the new cathedral he didn't allow moving these icons rather he collected them stacked them and and what did what did a, a, a procession then glorification to them no he burned them in a great celebration in front of a great multitude. He stood in the midst of the gathered multitude of his congregation and spoke to them, showing the reason of this fire. What is the reason? When he had finished his talk, he pointed to the pile of the fire or the ashes and said, Look at these, oh, sorry, those wooden pictures which she used to respect to the point of worship so when they said we respect to honor no sorry it's worship don't try to go around the bush uh, <clears throat> and he he pointed to them and see and said now they are ashes they do not harm you they do not benefit you and they added very important bit only god is worthy of uh, worship and uh, kneeling so this is the man and by the way it's mentioned about him also as a pope he rejected people uh, prostrating before him and he used to tell them uh, do you consider me as an idol 
So he considers yes, idol is worship and his worship is only for God. If you do it to someone else, it's considered as idol worshiping. All right. So this is another another uh, testimony from like 19th century from a pope that is considered as the former of Reformation, as they call him, from the Coptic Orthodox Church. They, they, they don't say he's like a crazy man or he's not a good guy, but even they call him as father of Reformation. So like a tiny Martin Luther, he did some uh, great like Reformation in the church. But unfortunately, after he died, because of money, everything was reinstated again. What a shame. So we covered the Bible and I got now two like witnesses from 4th century, from the 19th century, even from inside one of the popes of the Coptic Constructed Church. Now, at the end of the, to conclude this series, I have a very important uh, spiritual message in, like, in, 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 the same th in the same thing. In the book of Matthew chapter 13, after the, uh, the parable of the sower, and the disciple came and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? People don't understand it. When you say that, they just go. But only a group of people were the disciples, plus some other people, came and asked Jesus about the, uh, explain to us this. So what the Lord answered, how the Lord answered them? He said, he answered them, said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. To you. Who are those ones that are asking for? Let us know. But to those that, but to them it has not been given. And by the way, in the word, but to them, the word them in, in the book of Matthew is mentioned differently in the book of Mark chapter 4 about the same situation. It says those from who outside, from outside. And that the, uh, the the expression "those from outside" in the Bible mentioned in the New Testament, I think, two times or three, mostly or two, and referring to non-believers. So now he's saying those who them that outsiders, the non-believers, although the old Jews, will not understand. Really, why is that? Now, for whoever has. To him, more will be given. So whoever has what? Has the desire to know. Has the willingness to understand. Has the, the eagerness to know. Longing to know. So for whoever has, to him will be given. And he will have abundance. You remember when the Lord said, Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty to righteousness will be fulfilled. Will be filled. All right? But whoever doesn't have, doesn't have what? Doesn't have the desire to understand. They hear and they don't care. Doesn't have the desire to know. Doesn't have the desire to, like, to study the Bible seriously and to make a decision, as we will say. To those ones, even what he has will be taken away from him. Even the little that he had when he listened, but he didn't care, even this he will lose. Moreover, the Lord now will assure plainly. Therefore, I speak to them in parables. What is it? Because seeing, they do not see. What do I mean? Seeing, do not see. Yeah, they see. By the eyes, they can see. But they don't really take it like seriously. And hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they understand. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. That's it. And in them, now the Lord is going now to assure it that actually there is a prophecy in Isaiah, exactly in Isaiah 6, that this will happen. Some people will see Lord Jesus, they will hear him, they will not care, and they will actually vanish. They will uh, not be saved. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, hearing you will hear, and you shall not understand. Why? Will come later. And seeing, you will see, and you don't, and not perceive. Why? For the hearts of these people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes, uh, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see 
with their eyes and come back so I heal them. So this means what? It, many people will hear, but they don't really care. They don't care. So, dear brother and sister, this is my objective from this, from, from this channel. They deceive you. I'm showing you they deceive you. And you follow them. You don't study your own Bible. And what happens? Both of you will go into the ditch. That's it. So, actually, the heart grew up now. Grow, grow dull. Alright? And so they say, they hear, but they don't care. They hear the, 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 they are happy with the deception that they hear. I have proven to you now from the Bible and from the application from the 4th century, from the 19th century, idols were, it's all idol worshipping. The, the, the icons, the relics, the statues are idol worshipping and still you defend them. They defend them and you defend them as well. So unfortunately this is your fate. Your fate is sorry, destruction. You will not be saved. Yes, you hear, and you, but you hear what? You heard deception, and you're happy with that. Uh, another uh, uh, situation. <coughs> also in the book of, his, uh, of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, also he says that my people have been destroyed because uh, you rejected the knowledge. I shall, I shall reject you to be uh, my priest. Uh, listen also to this one in the book of... Uh, uh, Acts chapter 13 in Antioch of Bessidia, uh, a situation we read it together. Now, when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and the devout uh, proselytes, proselytes uh, were Gentiles but became Jews. They called them proselytes. Followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Wow! Like a, it's a, a great revival, isn't it? But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming, they opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said it was necessary that the word of god should be spoke, spoken to you first because you are the jews but since you rejected it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life behold we turn to the gentiles for so the lord has commanded us i haven't i sorry i have set you as a light to the gentiles that you should be for the salvation of the to the ends of the earth now when the gentiles heard this they were glad and glorified the word of the lord and many as had been appointed to eternal life believed so the lord knows those who will accept and he appointed them for the kingdom of God and the dear God's own that they believe. I would like to summarize this very quickly to you, dear brother and sister. You, you are scared to search behind those people and you find out they're telling you deception, not the truth. Because if you know, then you have to make a decision. You will be like standing on an intersection. You have to make a decision. Which way will go? You would like to stay there. You love the community. You feel the warmth of the community. You have these friends. What shall I do when I will be abandoned even by my households? I will be rejected. I, we, we suffer this, by the way, and we still, but we're happy with that. This is the cross that we carry, by the way. All right? They will warn people about, around, about us. They will could even spoil the reputa your reputation, defaming you. Could be, by the way, could go that far. All right, but you must carry the cross. So if you don't, you see, but you're not perceived. You hear and you not understand because your heart become dull. So you are, you judge yourself as, as Saint Paul said. You you judge yourself that you are unworthy of everlasting life because you rejected the word of God. 
you would like to go behind all this traditional stuff, deception stuff, and all this made up stuff as I explained over the last like six episodes. Now, there are 10 episodes since we started this year uh, covered the rel rel relics and icons and the statues. So, in fact, those 10 episodes all together will show you that the Bible is correct. The history proves that the Bible is correct as we, as we speak, but what the, these guys are preaching is incorrect. I, I, I summarize very quickly. You remember the relics? We, we mentioned that definitely is wrong, and it came in the fourth century, even before that. And we brought like the situation or the status or the position of Saint Athanasius, Saint Anthony, and uh, uh, what was the third one? The homies that they are against the relics, and also we proved when this disaster came by Saint Cyril, the pillar of the religion, and also. Uh, I uh, should that the, the Archimedes right. So this for the relics that were to, in total, the other ones, four episodes. I showed you Bible-wise, history-wise is, is, is not permitted. And over the last six episodes, I showed you also Bible-wise and history-wise. That's why I decided to make one specific episode about history from the 4th century, 19th century, that also pictures and uh, statues are wrong. And now the decision is yours. Would you like to accept the Bible as I explained it, or you accept the tradition and all the deception that you hear in that church? And then it's entirely up to you which way you would like to go. Uh, please share the video with others. Could be even one percent will be waking up. That would be the the whole heaven will will, will rejoice in that. Uh, give it a like if you think it worth it. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And unless the Lord comes, we'll meet again in another episode. May the Lord bless you all. Salam and mercy.